Hello class, the solutions for week 15. I thought of 0.35 as 3 tenths plus 5 one hundredths, and then I achieved a common denominator and added them and got 35 hundredths. And then one comment I want to make still, <clears throat> some people are still just writing a division by 5 once in order to reduce this to more simple terms. This is not good notation. Uh, what we're trying to do is trying to find a way to rewrite this fraction in a way that's the same value but more simple terms. It's kind of like saying, um, well, but when when you put a division by 5 like this, when you take a number and you divide it by 5, you transform this number into a new value. For example, let's pretend we're not working with fractions. If I write 6 uh, divided by 2, then I change 6 to 3, essentially. right? What I started with and what I now have are not the same. If you take a fraction, let's say we had 6 fifths, and I say divide by 2. Well, that will turn it into 3 fifths. What I started with and what I have now are not the same. When you're trying to do something where you're just making the same value but changing the way it looks, then make sure, like, let's say we have 6 eighths, you write divide by 2 twice so that we have six, uh, 3 fourths. And 3 fourths and 6 fifths are the same. Sorry, 6 eighths and 3 fourths. Right, so it's it's extremely confusing when you make when you write a statement like this because it's technically a false statement. 35 hundredths divided by 5 is 7 hundredths, not 7 twentieths. So just make sure you are, are uh, when you're altering the appearance of a fraction by writing one in equivalent form, that you're putting your times 5 or divided by 5 in both places there. Uh, let's see, what else can I say here? A lot of people on this one here, point 0.1 repeatings, just simply went straight to 1 ninth as an answer, as if that somehow that was some sort of given. But then they proved that 1 ninth, when... When you divide it, you do get 0.1 repeating. Uh, but how do you get one ninths in the first place? That was the question. And so when you have a repeating decimal, think of, and also the bar. A lot of people didn't notice that there was a bar here and a bar here. And some people thought the bar in the second case was over the 2 as well, but it's not. So when you see 0.1 repeating, this really means 0 0.1 and then just 1's forever. If you, multi you call that A and you multiply A by 10, and you get 1.1 1 .1, uh, repeating forever. And then you remove a from that, which is the point 0.1 repeating. So you get 9 a's, that's equal to 1, because the point 0.1 repeatings cancel, etc. And you get solve for a, you get 1 ninth. Now the issue with uh, this one here that was most common was that people thought the 2 was also part of the repeating component, but it's not. It's the 3, 5 that repeats. Uh, number two, uh, again, same issues here when people not putting times four in both places. Uh, certainly you can scale 25 to 100, so this was an easy approach to get 0.52. Uh, six is not a factor of any power of 10. You know, in other words, six does not divide any power of 10. Some people only said six doesn't divide 100, so I have to do long division. But 100 is only one example of a power of 10. Does six divide 1,000? Does six divide 10,000? You've know, you got to think of all these different possible powers of 10, but since 6 has a factor of 3 involved and 3 doesn't divide any power of 10, then 6 won't divide any power of 10. So doing long division and getting the pattern 0.83 repeating is our decimal. Uh, 11 eighths is certainly, you can scale 8 to get a power of 10, multiply it by 125. You notice that 10 is 2 times 5, and 8 is just a bunch of 2s. Oops, 3 2s when you, multi when you factor it. So... You simply have to have three tens to have as many twos. So eight will divide 10 cubed. Something to think about. And uh, seven also does not divide any power of 10. So for two sevens, we had to do long division. And we quick, quickly determined that uh, after getting these first six digits, we see a repeating pattern start to emerge. So make sure you put the bar over all the parts that repeat. Right? I, I saw some people do something like uh, they get this far, and they say, oh, it starts to repeat, so they put the bar only right there. Well, this suggests that only this would be twos forever from there on out. You need to put the bar above every part of it that is repeating. Uh, number three, uh, 
Typically, there were no issues with number three. Some people struggled to convert 1.8 to an appropriate fraction. It's either 18 tenths or 180 hundredths, either way you want to think about it. But once you have a common denominator, then we can add these together and then convert back to a decimal. Uh, a, a big issue, uh, it's not a huge issue, but a common issue, I should say. A common issue I saw with students on multiplication and division was even after they converted the decimals to fractions, they felt the need to get a common denominator. So they changed this to 31 hundredths. Well, with multiplication and division, you don't need to worry about common denominators. You can just multiply the numerators and get 6, 18, and multiply the denominators, even though they're different, and just get 1,000. And then converting that to a decimal was pretty straightforward. Uh, this one here, uh, similarly, we don't need co any common denominators, and it's the second fraction here, the divisor, that gets inverted. Some people uh, were inverting the dividend, which is not correct for the algorithm. And then you get this far, which I re got to here, which I reduced to 10 thirds. And 10 thirds is 3 and a third. And I know I know 1 third is 0 0.3 repeating, so we have 3.3 repeating. Uh, number four, uh, that was good work here uh, uh, for the most part. Uh, a few mistakes, but I think those mistakes could be easily taken care of by just uh, pausing and watching the video or looking at the problem here. Uh, in this case here, the common mistake was, so we're, we're saying 8% of what will give me the raise of 12,000. So we need to find that question mark. And uh, really, it's uh, a form of uh, partitive division that answers this because we're looking for a missing multiplicand. But we have to do 12,000 divided by 8%. Well, 8% is 8 one hundredths, and then invert and multiply instead. And that winds up giving you 150,000. So that was the salary before the raise in dollars. And the biggest issue I saw with uh, this one here was, even if you did get the two correct percentages right, I did want you to tell me which percent went with which question. Right? There are two questions here, and you gave two answers. I'm not just going to assume that you put them in the same order. So having a complete sentence like this makes things clear. And even when people did attempt these sentences, sometimes they got the these percentages uh, backwards. They needed to reverse them. Or they got the names backwards, whichever one way you want to think about it. But... If you look at this st structure here, this 180 is John's weight. Then what percentage is what we found? It'd be 120. And then this is Jackie's weight. So when you just translate this back into a sentence, it's John's weight is 120% of Jackie's weight. All right. So just translate that literally into this sentence. Uh, and then finally... Uh, here, there were several issues with this I want to uh, point out. Obviously, some of these numbers were in disguise, like 2 cubed is the same thing as 8, and that's just a natural number, right? So you can put that in the natural number box. Uh, I was okay if you simplified the ones that simplify or you did not. So if you put an 8 here or you put a 2 cubed instead, I didn't really care because they're the same number. Um, in the end, it turned out that five of our numbers were counting numbers, so five of them belonged in here. Six of our numbers were whole, right? D don't forget that when I say the whole numbers, some people, you might get the impression that the whole numbers is referring only to uh, this ring right here. But in reality, the whole numbers is referring to that entire circle, including what's inside of it. So the whole numbers is really, you know, this is the whole numbers everything inside the W circle, including the N circle. So there are six whole numbers here, but only one of those whole numbers is also not a counting number, and that's zero. In fact, zero is the only whole number that's not a counting number at all. It's the only ever possible number to be inside W, but outside N, and that's the only candidate. Uh, how many integers were there? Well, if there were six whole numbers and then two more integers, so we really had a eight integers total in the Z circle, but two of them were outside the W circle. They were not whole. So in other words, negative counting numbers. So negative 120 is a negative counting number. Negative 15 fifths is the same thing as negative 3. That's a negative counting number. So those are the two that go in this ring. Uh, the Q is the rational numbers. It's everything in the Q circle, right? All this is, is are examples of rational numbers. So when I say how many rational numbers are there, some of you might be tempted to say that there are only four. Well, there's only four that are not integers, but when you count you know, all of these, there are technically 12 total 
rational numbers in our list. Four of them, though, belong in this ring that's inside Q but outside Z. Uh, so this decimal can be rewritten as a fraction of integers. Uh, this is already a fraction of integers. That's not a whole number not, or negative whole numbers, not an integer. This is negative. In decimal form, it's negative 2.5, uh, which is not a negative counting number. 0.15 repeating is 5 30 thirds. I'll leave you to figure out how to do that, but all repeating decimals are uh, rational numbers that are not integers. And 2 to the negative 3 means 1 eighth. That also is uh, a rational number, but not an integer. So four rational numbers that were not integers. And then finally, we had three, four irrational numbers. And irrational numbers are real numbers that are not rational. So when I say shade in the, the irrational, it's just this outer ring. You know, technically all the way around, etc. If I say shade in the real numbers, hopefully you would shade in all of this. Because everything inside the R circle is a real number. In other words, all 16 of these numbers are real numbers. But only uh, the four in the outer ring that we have here are the irrationals. Okay, that's our last homework assignment.